Okay. Oh. Do need to play the music. Hello there. And welcome. Welcome. My name. Today, I estimate it to be. Ugh. Walker, goddamn motherfucker, piece of shit. Stuck. It's me. Close enough. I talked to Alex Miller recently. The episode is already uploaded, but it's not public. I need to make sure all the information. Um, that it's just Alex. His last name is not privy to you. You, th they aren't for you. Um, but uh, we talked a bit about non-duality and non-self, which... If you want to learn more, go uh, watch the goddamn episode. It's really good. I'm actually, like, so, so fucking pumped about it. I think it's, like... Yeah, yeah. To me, that's, like, what I'd want Joe Rogan to be. And Joe Rogan should be Joe Rogan. Fuck me. You do you. But, uh, this is the kind of shit I want to be... This is like, you know when you like step back and you look at something, you're like, that's, that's what we want. That's what we're going for. So, very stoked about that. Um, but today, we are looking at some shit. Maybe I should be on the other side. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, this is a website that is about the extent of my knowledge called Quantum Playground. Sounds sexy, sounds hot. There's a, a video game, The Outer Wilds, or Worlds, I can never recall the less popular um, one, where you're a little spaceman, green dude, flying around a small solar system, and um, trying to discover, like, mystery. It's it's one of the most beautiful things ever made. But uh, part of the plot is that there's a moon, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quantum moon. It's a moon that is quantum. So if you look at it, it stays there. But if you look away, it's somewhere else. And it's 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 really cool. It's really cool. Um, the way they sort of like introduce that whole thing is amazing. And I can't spoil for you how to get on the moon because I don't know. I haven't figured it out. <sighs> Quantum shit is weird. I have stated in a video I may or may not have published. Maybe it's just an idea in my own mind. But that quantum computing is the, really the only thing that rivals AI in its implications. Um, I don't think it's quite there. If it was, I'd be working on it. Um, that's how I make decisions, is based on the implications. Um, but, in particular, the combination of AI plus quantum computing... What? What the fuck? What the f Wait, what? What? Um, and I have no idea. Nobody really knows what the hell that will look like and do and be. So, what is my, uh, what is my implication? Let's learn a bit about it. Let's uh, actually see what decoding do. I've been listening to some Scott Aronson from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, fucking... He reminds me so much of one of my cousins, who's, uh, uh, well, he's actually borderline famous, actually. He, uh, I'll leave him nameless, but I'd like to have him on the show, because he's fascinating. But he's an economist who, uh, not only was, like, a tenured professor at a good university, which name I forget, but also he, uh, was part of the Trump administration's, uh, like, cabinet or something. Um, which is... You know, regardless of, like, yo, opinions on Trump, many of which, some of which, are valid. Um, you know, just that, that's a pretty, pretty high bar. It's like, hey, you actually played a part during, you know, one of the worst, um, catastrophes the U.S. has ever seen, um, in the most wealthy and powerful country the world has ever seen. Kind of cool. Um, and he's a really nice guy who, uh, has some cute, uh, Got a bunch of kids who are like adorable. They're like very young. Um, and he's just fascinating, and so is his wife. His wife is fascinating. And his yeah, wild, wild family. Wild family. They're they're crazy in, in the best of ways. So Scott Aronson reminds me 
of my cousin, who I'm a fan of. It is obviously... I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, how to approach him to be on the show. Um, like, what exactly we would talk about? Hyperinflation! Maybe! Maybe that's one! Just maybe. Um, another thing is what? I'd like to start a rumor. I'd like to start a, uh, start, start a thing. It's not true, but let's pretend like it is. All quantum computing people, or, or statistically, surprisingly, quantum computing people are egregiously, atrociously, deplorably, despicably attractive. You heard it here first. Now, I'm not a quantum computing person, so unfortunately, I don't think I get grandfathered in, but, uh, what are you gonna do? What the fuck are you gonna do, huh? We have sound? That we do. Okay. Um, so what is a quantum computer? We could look at the real definition. We could... We should look at the real definition. BBB. I mean, basically, it's a, it's a computer that uses... Um, the, the, we the weirdness... The weirdness of... Uh, Quantum shit. So, use of quantum phenomena, superposition, and entanglement. We've talked about these before. Computers have performed quantum computations known as quantum computers. They believe to be able to solve certain computational problems, such as integer factorization. Basically, all of your money, which was already fake, is now you can't hold onto it. Um, substantially faster than classical computers. The study of quantum computing is a subfield of quantum information science. It is likely to expand in the next few years as the field shifts towards real-world use in pharmaceutical data security and other applications. For instance, J.P. Morgan is investing a lot. <sighs> which, which I guess is good. I guess that's good. But it's also, I don't know, is it is it fair to say that's a little freaky and completely without basis? Just... <laughs> Everyone's a little paranoid, okay? Let's just, we can be honest about that, it's fine. Um, all possible states exist at the same time. It's not that you haven't measured them, it's that they actually exist in all places at all times which which if you can wrap your head around that i want to know what you're drinking that's beautiful that's really pretty i like that um with a certain probability and all computations are performed on all possibilities at the same time this is like not necessarily the case i'm pretty sure after listening to some experts um last night, aka very, very early in the morning. Fuck. Fuck uh, circadian rhythm. Okay. Have a frog in my throat. Please forgive me. So, that's, that's the, the boring fucking, um, stupid, you know, time to get a flushy nerd, uh, explanation, big brain plays. Okay, this, this is what they actually are. This is what they really are. You know, this? What is this? This is probably very dangerous to just, like, go to the internet. Um, no, we we won. This is it. This is it. We won. Um, also, 100,000 IQ. Okay. Quantum computing allows us to do stuff that was thought to be impossible. Which is why it's very important we have a very low opinion of impossible. Impossible is what bitches say. We don't want to be bitches. We want to be winners or something. I don't know. And I want all of us to be winners. It's weird how things you say stick in your mind. Um, so, let's do that. Let's do that. Right? Exponential speed up, quantum computing, AI, boom! Explosion, intelligence, and it's either terrible or cool. It's definitely cool. So, what the fuck do we have? Make sure that we have a recording. We do. Um, last night this would run. Now, what it it ran, it did a thing. I don't know what it's running. It's currently running. What does that mean? I listened to an entire discussion on the Hadamard yesterday. It's like a matrix with a bunch of ones and zeros. That's about all I got. I was also playing Path of Exile and making a Strength Stacker. Because um, I think it's going to be 
I'm a little bit broken. Things can be a little bit overpowered. And I want to get banned for exploiting a video game. Because fuck these people. Okay. So, let's, let's go home. I want to start. Start with reading. We'll go over here for now. I'm going to be flopping. I'm going to be flipping. You never know. <clears throat> How do you program a quantum computer? What a question. What a question. It just happens we're trying to look for the answer. The most basic operations performed... Excuse me, I had uh, some pancakes this morning, which were very good. The most basic operations performed on qubits are defined by quantum gates. God, that sounds fucking cool. Similar to logical gates used in classic computers. Believe like a transistor. Using quantum gates, one can build complex algorithms, usually ending in a measurement operation, so big one, which obtains a classical value of qubits, either zero or one, but not a superposition. Um, this is why I talk a lot about the whole unreal number thing, period of the veil. This this plays a part, if I had to guess. I don't know how. Um, the state of a quantum computer, a set of qubits called quantum register, didn't know that, can be visualized in a number of ways, typically as a 2D or 3D graph. Okay on which points or bars represent superpositions of qubits, while their color or bar height represent the amplitude and phase, what do you mean by phase, of a given superposition. I'm not a physics guy. Uh, I have many friends who are. Um, okay. An interesting property of quantum gates is their reversibility. Apparently that's like a really important component is that they're reversible allowing for program execution both forward and in reverse without any side effects. I don't know why, but where can I buy? You, you really can't. Um, uh, which, similar to, to deep learning, I'm just kind of machine learning as it exi exists now, is if you want to do cutting edge research or really um, kind of crazy stuff, for the most part, you're not buying that hardware, unless you're, like, literally a million or plus. Um, and even then, uh, you, you need server farms. You need you need connections um, or the backing of somebody like a Facebook or a Google or a government. <laughs> Which we, in the U.S., do not have, because fucking idiots. I have an opinion. I do. Dude, my hair is so fun. Why don't men have long hair? I've only had long hair for like, I don't know, I, I, what is time? Year? Year plus? Something like that? Alright, let's do step-by-step -step demo. Let's get into the goddamn code. Oh, select an example from script list. Click compile to run in browser compilation. Trick console window. Click run to execute the script. Fuck that script, it must die. Execute the script step-by-step, -step, forward or backward. That's fucking weird. Okay. This is crazy. Now that's that's the best advice. All right. Um Look through. This example? I'm sorry this text is horrible. Like, it's just really hard to see. It's just really hard to see. Is that better? Oh, most certainly. Um, let me test something have my screen with a very, very voluptuous yellow tint, so that I, uh, that's not so bad. Okay. It's fine. Um, yellow tint because migraines and bright colors fuck with my mind. 
because god damn it, why is psychology so shit? <sighs> I have a very sad story about that. Which we'll leave for another time. But psychology needs to do better. Not just because, ooh, let's shit on the, the dumb kid. <laughs> but because we, we need it. We need it to do better. Need it to do better. Needed it to do better years ago. Okay. This example demonstrates principles of quantum computing. <clears throat> Size of our vector is 8. There is no equal sign or assignment operation. What is... Okay. Our view mode is 2. Display. The square surface represents... 256 states of 8 qubits. Um, each qubit gets you a, a power of 2, so it's exponential, um, a, a power of 2 more um, states, ability to process, in theory. In practice, there's a lot of noise, so you don't actually get that much, and that's one of the big areas of research that's going on, pretty sure. So the surface square represent, represents the surface square. Let's round this fucker. Okay, so a big part they mentioned so you can put a break. So step back. I see, okay. Okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. let's just go way back. So, yes it does. The square surface, there's a lot of square surfaces here. A one, two, three. It represents 256 states of eight qubits. Okay, I won't pretend that I really get that. Delay, delay. So this is just so that when you click play, it all looks nice and dandy. And I'm still not blocking anything overly important. I don't, I don't think. Um, let's pass, okay, nice. So now, initial state of quantum register, what says it here? Of quantum register is state zero with no other states contributing. Okay, so I'm guessing this is like, this is not, oh, this is very strange. Now, Hadamard, I might look that up, um, oh, so well. what if Hadamard was three, for chance we'll check that. It's the music, I see. Hope you enjoy the music. This is Lucas King. He is a fellow. Lucas is a, on average, boy's name. Um, male's name, whatever. He does funky music. Like, uh, well, you've been listening to it. But uh, kind of H.P. Lovecrafty vibe is what I, what I think of it of. And I don't think he uh, precludes you from playing it on the internet copyright and such things. Why why do we have hair here? Isn't this weird? Do you enjoy that? Yes. <laughs> Gross. Okay. Creates superposition of states zero and one for given qubit here too. So for the second qubit we have it's it's in superposition. But then why is it in the first index position if we were to 
think of this that way. I don't know. Um... Anyone who knows what this is thinks I'm a fucking idiot. They're like, how does he not get it? And that's fine. I think that's I think that's really fun. It's like the joy of watching somebody play a game you've played, like a puzzle game, um, you know the answer, and you're like, these fucking idiots can't see you right in front of their eyes! And uh, I think that's an important point about uh, so much of our knowledge and experience and, and whatever is ignoring everything else that is focus that is attention is you know most of your subconscious ignoring everything that doesn't matter um and when you're faced with something truly novel it is so what the fuck it's not actually 3d oh wait yes it is is it no it totally is huh um when faced with something truly novel you don't don't have those tools as much. There are some assumptions we can never get away from. So, my question, my proposal, is that each of these is a representation of zero or one. So in this case, this is zero, this is one. And then is this whole square the fucking cubit? It represents... So the whole square is 256 states of 8 qubits. So is this the interaction between two qubits? I don't know. Let us move forward. Why is this changing? I have no idea. Like, none of these variables is just delay. The qubits automatically oscillate? Explain much. Sigma X gate quantum knot. Okay, flip state zero and one for given qubit. Here zero. Sigma X gate. Flip state 0 and 1 for given qubit. Here's 0. Okay, so we're going to perform a not computation. Oh. Well, I'm more confused. Okay, I think my hypothesis was bullshit and wrong. So... We have a representation of eight qubits. But we're doing computation on one of them? But then do we have two emergent states? I don't know. I'm going to continue forward. Um. How to mark gates. Here we go. This is looking a little bit more rigorous, isn't it? What in the fuck? What is happening? Also, I'd like I'd like to mention. Um, what the fuck? What? What is this? 3D game of life? That is a thing, by the way. It's very cool stuff. Okay. Well, um, this is a lot. This is a lot. What is happening? Holy shit. 
Is there something special about this side, I wonder? Maybe it's just an artifact of this tutorial. I don't know. Um, what did you say? I don't know. My brain... My brain... Pooped! Ugh. Oh! Um... You can't own a quantum computer, but a lot of, uh... It's a sleepy day, alright? I made pancakes. <laughs> they were very good. Um, but I have coffee in here. Where's my coffee? It's over there. Um... Owning a quantum computer, not practical. You gotta keep little bitty cubics in, in things at very, very cold temperatures. Some research um, on this, whatever. It's not easy. It's not easy, currently. Um, so, this is all fake, right? We're just simulating a quantum computer? It's possible. But a lot of, uh, I'm pretty sure IBM in particular, allow you to use their actual quantum computer actually doing superposition in these things via a uh, the internet via the internet you are you are allowed to uh, connect and run your own run your own shit my question is what does a Stuxnet bug look like on a quantum computer huh huh now we're getting into the fun shit but I don't know how to do anything okay so this was one of the most wild ride shits um and let it run again because god that was fun to watch we'll watch it from this side this time um This example demonstrates properties of Hadamard gate, not A, but of Hadamard gate. Vector size 8, delay 500. So is vector size 8, is that the number of qubits? Maybe? For i equal to 0, so we're going to do a little looping, as we've seen. Sleepy. Went for a walk, had coffee. Heck, I didn't have coffee. Um, but I don't need coffee to wake up. I need activity! I less than 8. Increment. So, loop through 8 times. Display. Creating super superposition. Superposition. I don't know why that word's fucking me. I guess we had a fling. Um, super. 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 It's, it's so much right here. All the words are right here. Superposition of all states. Bit increment. Hadamard I. Alright, let's go here. Oh, wait. Let's start over. Ah. So, where are we? Uh, let, let's stop somewhere here. Let's just do... Okay, let's take this out. Let's go back. I think I have to go through this shit. I'm pressing the wrong button. We're going back, we're going back. This is not... Is this what we start with? Okay. Yeah, no, it's not. I thought this had to be reversible. Whatever. Um, so we start with our vector size of 8. Creating superposition of all states, bit zero, as in like index zero, I think. 
Hadamard Eye. And four. So now Hadamard at bit one. And we make a little thing. Am I correct in saying that we've only seen in a binary fashion? No blocks or blocks? Like there's no like in the middle. The amplitude. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Sorry, I'm trying to combine this with the knowledge I gained from a recent computer file video, which blew my goddamn socks off. Blew my goddamn socks off. They made a quantum, um, atomic neural net. It's literally a neural network made out of, like, each neuron and synapse is a single atom. It's a single atom. And I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. Okay, we're still... We're still going strong, Jefferson! Don't you worry, my lad, we'll be just fine. Uh, what the fuck is the Hadamard? I am aware. Oh! We're gonna learn a bit about, uh... Let's start with the dude. Let's... Oh, fuck. I did this earlier and it fucked everything, but that's because I was... Using a different... Doesn't matter. No one cares. Nobody gives a fuck, Walker. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, Jacques, I think. 1865 to 1963. Now that's what I call a meatball of a man. Was a French mathematician who made major contributions in number theory, complex analysis, differential geometry, and partial differential equations. Hell yeah. The son of a teacher, Jewish descent, Claire Marie Jean Picard. God, these names are so fun. Holy shit. Um, in Versailles. I don't know anything about Versailles. Charlemagne. <sighs> we fought a cut. Yep, yep, he did school. He did math. Riemann Zeta. Whoa, what? He obtained his doctorate in 1892. God, that's weird. It's weird to think about, uh... I'm relatively young and looking at somebody such as Jan LeCun, and, like, the guy had his doctorate literally before I was born, I'm pretty sure. It's just like, huh. Huh. How does that factor in? Well, it does in one way, which is learn fast. <laughs> um, 1892, that's over 100 years ago. That's, that's a bit ago, obviously. He's, he's dead now, but death is going away. I don't know if you were aware. Um... Can you imagine talking to somebody who got their doctorate? Not in psychology, but a, but a real science. <laughs> Shots fired. A um, hundred years before yourself. Goodness. What, what would we do with a human like that? Getting very off topic. Alright. Oh, damn. Got a prize and his doctorate the same year. Good year. Um, he married? Dude, so- everyone marries! Does that- does that shock anybody else? I'm always like, ev everyone marries. And it's not even like a, um... I don't even mean like in the heterosexual sense, but just like, everyone is married to someone. Regardless of, uh... Gender, it's all fuzzy to me. I don't get it, and that's... That's- that's fine. I'm trying to get this. Um... Goodness. So he's just one of those guys who just did an absolute fuck ton, isn't he? 
on creativity. In his book, Psychology of Invention in the Mathematical Field, Hadamard uses the results of introspection to study mathematical thought processes and tries to report and interpret observations, personal or gathered from other scholars engaged in the work of invention. In sharp contrast to authors who identify language and cognition, he describes his own mathematical thinking as largely wordless, often accompanied by accompanied by mental images that represent the entire solution to a problem. Did anybody say autism? I did. Um, actually, Temple Grandin has done some really stellar talks on visual thinkers. Visual thinkers. Her voice is amazing. He surveyed a hundred of the leading physicists of the day, approximately 1900, asking them how they did their work. Hadamard described the experiences of the mathematicians, theoretical physicists Carl Friedrich Gauss, Hermann von, von Helmholtz, Henry Poincaré, and others, those are big names, and others as viewing... I also think, isn't there like a evil fucking Nazi Helmholtz? Am I making that up? He was German. I could be wrong. Please, let's... let's Calm down. Um, Henry Poincaré and others is viewing the entire solutions with sudden spontaneousness. Interesting. I've definitely experienced some similar things. If you're like, oh, that's the answer. Um, Hadamard described the process as having four steps. Is my face in the way? Um, four steps of the five-step Graham Wallace creative process model. With the first three also having been put forth by Helmholtz. Nice. Preparation, incubation. Illumination and verification. I might say this is like the most important step. I kind of want to do a video um, where it's just like an hour of me sitting in silence. And the, the point is that like, take time to process, to incubate, and just, just mull shit over. This is why we fucking sleep, right? Your, your body and most animals have a third of your fucking life devoted to that, and if you don't do it, you literally die. So I think it's pretty important we take the goddamn time and stop pretending like we're busy. Many of us are actually busy, okay? Calm, calm down. That's a, that's a structural societal problem, if that's the case. I propose. Sleep is a lot of things. I think that's I think that's one of them. I think that's its primary. Um, interesting recent paper on a similar thing on uh, overfitting, which we're not talking about. We're talking about the Hadamard transform. I got sidetracked by an interesting scientist, one of the one of the great physicists. God, I love them. And mathematician. Big overlap. The Hadamard transform, also known as the Walsh Hadamard transform, and many many other names is an example of a generalized class of Fourier transforms, which I know a bit about, but it's been a while. It performs an orthogonal, symmetric... What the hell is this word? Involutive. I have never heard of this. An involution, or an involutory... Okay. Function is a function f. That is its own inverse. Trying to think of an example. Please give me a simple example. Really? For all x in the domain of f? Oh, this equals... Wow. That is so bizarre. What is this? Part of my chair has broken off. Nice. Projective geometry. Fuck everything else. An involution is a projectivity of period two. Oh no, I'm gonna rubber my pay grid. That is a projectivity that interchanges pairs of points. Okay. Any projectivity that interchanges two points is an involution. Okay. The three pairs of opposite sides of a complete quadrangle. Okay meet any line, not through a vertex, and three pairs of an involution. This theorem has been called... Yep, 
Yep, Involution Theorem. Its origins can be seen in Lemma. Four of the Lemmas to the Porisms of Euclid. Nice. In Volume 7 of the Collection of Pappus of Alexandria. Great. Um, if an evol involution has one fixed point, it has another. And consists of the correspondence between harmonic conjugates with respect to these two points. Okay. In this instance, the involution is termed hyperbolic, while if there are no fixed points, it is elliptic. I feel this is all very specific. Which I could be wrong. Um, involution. Function shits out its own food. Nailed it. Uh, see, math is fun if you give it swear words. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is why the university system needs updating. Okay, it needs a little more spice and pizzazz. Spice and pizzazz. In a bottle! <laughs> it's water, you fucks. Calm down. Um, but I do enjoy the rise it gets out of people. Alright. We got very distracted. With projective geometric involutions. Goodness. So, this thing, the Hadamard transform, it's an example of a general class of Fourier transforms. It performs an orthogonal, which is a concept I always forget what the fuck it means. Do you have those? Where, like, you know it, and then you forget it. You know it, and then you forget it. Just, like, won't stick. Your memory refuses. And other things you can't get out of your mind. So it's a generalized class of Fourier transforms. End stop. It performs an orthogonal, symmetric, and volutive linear operation on 2 to the m real numbers. Or complex or hypercomplex. Hypercomplex numbers? What the fuck is that? Holy shit. Dude, to be a pure mathematician, how do you stay sane? I don't know. I don't know. Although, the Hadamard matrices themselves are purely real. So you can do computation on complex numbers but the matrices themselves are actually real okay that feels a little bit like a set you can have weird shit in the set but the set itself acts normally and i think vice versa sometimes <sighs> once again it's like a bucket maybe it's a bucket of peanut butter um where inside is not peanut butter but instead a tiny frog frog that is so tiny it is invisible so invisible it does not exist. The Hadamard transform can be regarded as being built at size two discrete Fourier transforms. Okay? And is in fact equivalent to a multi-dimensional DFT mm. of size two by two by two by two. M is something. It decomposes an arbitrary input vector into a superposition of Hulsch functions. In mathematic, mathematics, more specifically in harmonic analysis, Walsh functions, Walsh functions, <laughs> mm. Alright, sexy man. Harmonic analysis Walsh functions form a complete orthogonal set of functions that can be used to represent any discrete function. Just like trigonomic functions can be used to represent any continuous function in Fourier analysis. Okay. So, into a type of function. I'm just going to say that. The Hadamard function, it, decomposes an arbitrary input vector. Arbitrary means it's general and we use it for a lot of shit. It decomposes an arbitrary input vector into a superposition. Big old bucket of fuzzy. 
superposition of a type of function. That is a dense sentence. That is a lot. That's a lot. All right, let's let's just keep moving. I feel on this show could be quite helpful. The trans transform is named for the French mathematician Jacques Hadamard, <laughs> and he rose over in his grave. The German American mathematician Hans Rademacher, and the American mathematician Joseph L. Walsh. Yeah, this looks helpful. Okay. The product of a Boolean function and a Walsh matrix is its Walsh spectrum. Okay, so Boolean function, Walsh matrix, not simply Boolean. Nor bounded. Maybe bounded? We got an 8 here. None of these numbers are outside of the range of 8, plus or minus. Or is 8 the number of times we... Perf no. I'm shit at linear algebra. Never took the class. I've delved in some, but definitely not enough. Definitely not enough. Um... But I'm pretty sure... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you multiply these two together, you get a square. <laughs> so I'll say it. Um, of n by n size. Something like that. So this 8, I don't believe is necessary to state, other than the fact that maybe the range of... Does not make any fucking sense? Isn't 4 times 1, 4? But it's a Walsh spectrum. Does that mean something? I don't know. Ooh, the FAST transform. The FAST Oreo transform. Faster way to calculate the Walsh spectrum of 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Because now I'm like, wait a second, Are th is this just the output from this being, like, operated on itself? Somehow? Alright, let's try this. And if this, if this doesn't go swimmingly, I will concur a concrete fact, which is that if you want to learn quantum computing, try and learn it from somebody else. Or like an actual tutorial, not just like, I can figure this shit out. I'm not figuring this shit out. <laughs> I'm just like, what? What is, what is, what is occurring? All right. Um, in quantum computing, the Hadamard gate is a one qubit. So think of it like one one bit, a binary, zero and one. Um, it's a one bit rotation, qubit rotation. Rotation. What does that mean? What do you mean by rotation? Well, thank you for telling me what a rotation is. <laughs> Didn't mean that. Mapping the qubit basis states, one and one. Sorry, zero. Reading is really tough. Do you know that? Zero and one. To two superposition states. Mapping the qubit basis states, zero and one, to two superposition states with equal weight 
of the computational basis states of zero and one. Okay. Usually the phases are chosen so that we have. Yeah, I remember seeing this. One over the square root of two. Or zero and one over the square root of two. Why the square root of two? I know that's a special the square root of two is like a special number, it has some funky properties. But why here? Right? It's not pi, it could be e, it could be other. I thought they were the same thing. They are not. It's been a while. Okay? It's been a while. Um, they're not the same. <laughs> e, square root of 2, different things. In Dirac notation, this corresponds to the transform matrix, transformation matrix. This shit. So these are the same? In a different notation? Alright, it's a lot more legible. So 1 over root 2 by the matrix... 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Apparently this negative 1 is a big deal. Like, this is what ensures the involution, the ability to, to go backwards in time, to, to reverse your... Um, it's not a one-way function, so Bitcoiners, beware. And the 0, 1 basis, also known as the computational basis, these states... 0 plus 1 over root da -da, are known as plus and negative, respectively, and together constitute polar basis in quantum computing. Um, so, like spin, up spin, down spin. Nice. So now the actual operations we can perform. One application of the Hadamard gate to either a 0 or 1 qubit will produce a quantum state that, if observed, measured, what have you, will be a 0 or 1 with equal probability. One application of the Hadamard gate to either a 0 or 1 qubit produce a quantum state that the observed will be a 0 or 1 with equal probability as seen in the first two operations. This is exactly like flipping a fair coin in the standard probabilistic model of computation, okay? Coin flip, 50-50 chance. However, if the Hadamard gate is applied twice in succession, as is, is effectively being done in the last two operations, I presume these, then, the final state is always the same as the initial state. The final state is always the same as the initial state. You don't... Got it. So like a... Like a Rubik's Cube, if you... Perform the same algorithm on it, you'll get back to the same starting position. You're welcome for that one. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hadamard transform in quantum algorithms. Molecular phylogenetics. God, dude, science is full of so many funny, shitty words. And it's fun. Hadamard transform in quantum algorithms. Computing. The quantum Hadamard transform is simply the application of the Hadamard gate to each qubit individually because of the tensor product structure of the Hadamard transform. This simple result means the quantum Hadamard transform requires log n operations compared to the classical n log n operations. Okay, that's, that's nice. Many quantum algorithms use the Hadamard transform as an initial step, since it maps n qubits initialized with zero 
to a superposition of all 2 to the m orthogonal states in the O1 basis with equal weight. Sorry. Many quantum algorithms use the Hadamard transform as an initial step. Hadamard transforms as an initial step. Use the Hadamard transform as an initial step since it maps m qubits initialized in a certain way, in this case zero, to a superposition of all two to the m orthogonal states in the zero one basis with equal weight. Okay, so is basically what it does is it takes your non kind of quantum shit and throw it into the into the quantum like it throws it into superposition it's your it's your super gun is that can i say that can i say that i was just bald i was just bald what about that for example this is used in the dutch Yolza algorithm Simon's out al these algorithms grover's algorithm i've heard of that one Note that Shor's algorithm, this is the one everyone gets a little stiff for, uses both an initial Hadamard transform as well as the quantum Fourier transform. Uses both an initial Hadamard transform as well, okay, as well as the quantum Fourier transform, which are both types of Fourier transforms on finite groups. Polynomial time quantum computer algorithm for integer factorization. Okay. I don't know if this is interesting, but I, one of the, the first moments when I when I thought everyone else were, were fucking stupid. I don't know how young I was, but rather um, like elementary school perhaps. And I was trying to like understand the rule, the principle, the the practice of factoring numbers, right? Like, what two numbers make this one, or whatever the fuck factoring even is? Um, and everyone's like, "Oh, you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta try stuff." I'm like, "Well, that is not gonna work well." Um, and it turns out that like we actually don't know how to factor large numbers because um, you there's there's no pattern. You just have to try shit. And that made me very angry. It made me very angry as a young child. I was like, fuck these people, how do you do it? They won't tell me, do they just not know? No, they don't know, nobody knows. Which is why we need quantum computers, okay. Informally, it solves the following problem. Given an integer n, find its prime factors. Invented 94, well, that's pretty recent. 94, wow. Well done, Peter Shore. Nicely done. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to be ending this pretty quickly. I hope you're okay with that. If you're not, pay me more money. Any, any money. <laughs> um, so, we do a superposition of all states for a bit. And then we do that again. Then we delay. And then we... These are all identical, though. Wait, I and seven. So this one we reverse order. All right, let's just start over. All right, so we're going through here. Make we're making Hadamards, or we're we're performing that process on a bit. So how how do we go from doing one? And then we're creating entire lines at a time. Like it's, it's exponential. Oh, that tells us a lot. That tells us a lot. Because it's actually performing the operation, not just on a single bit, but on the entanglement of all of them. Which is why we get sort of 
operations that affect the entire object. Object? Qubit mess? Nest? I'm very inclined to call this just random emergent complexity. Because, um, again, we're just Hadamard I. We're just running this... Um, this algorithm, or this... Uh, complex, and I don't mean complex numbers, I just mean literally large and, and lots of shit going on matrices on the entire thing. It's not just... We're not doing uh, operations on single objects. Kind of. Kind of obviously, but I'm slow, alright? Okay, and a big point is that we're supposed to be able to get back to zero. So I don't think these mean anything. Let's assume they don't. If they don't, then we've gotten our Rubik's Cube back to where we started. We've done a bunch of these transforms. We've, we've multiplied this to this a bunch of times. It filled up the entire block, and then it did weird shit. Game of life, complexity theory, rule 30, etc. And then... We're back here, which is where we started. Right? What the fuck? And then we do it again. Okay. All right. Alright, I, I feel like we get some things. Not a lot. This is like such a simple programming language that I don't quite know how useful it really be. The author's such a fucking coward. They're anonymous. Shots fired. Uh, gates in reverse order. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as far as I understand, my... Shitty, perhaps wrong, guess is that the Hadamard throws our shit into superposition. That's sort of like this is your scaling in size operation function you actually perform to get into your funky business place. Who wants a happy happy place when you have a funky business place? If I ask you. Okay. Back to Hadamard. Incubation. We have spent some amount of time, I'm completely unaware of how long, some amount of time injecting things into our mind. Right? Neuralink's not that different. It's just it's physical... Um, rather than purely mental. Now, we need to spend some time to incubate these ideas, to let them mull over, right? I learned a bunch of quantum stuff last night, kind of, and then I went to sleep. And I spent some time doing whatever we do in sleep, we don't know. But part, one, one thing we do know is that there's a bit of incubation, a bit of mulling over and processing. It is Saturday, and my brain hurts. I realized one of my uh, big proposals for how to end uh, game game A and convert to game B has some problems, and I can't figure them out yet. So, how do we uh, end the doggo eat doggo cycle? I don't know. I don't know. I do know we need to at least get the framework set up, which is not a thing yet, um, and that's. A list of many recent papers. Mark songs. Holy shit, there's a person in here. I don't even notice. Oops. Oh. Hey there. <laughs> I'm 
Nice. Well, that's funny. Um, what is this? So, quantum coding. Sleep also cleans waste from your brain. Yeah, it does a lot of things. Um, feels spinal fluid, apparently. Didn't know that. Harmonic conjugates. Yeah, I heard of that. What is what is what is a harmonic conjugate? Or was that was this? No. What is a harmonic conjugate? I'm such a fool. I had the uh, OBS open and not the not the Twitch. Somebody actually popped by. By the name of Mark Songs. It's a fun name. What the fuck is a harmonic conjugate? A human being from the chat, we're streaming live, I uh, may put this video out. I may not, um, but I may. Mentioned the harmonic conjugate, question mark. In mathematics, a real value function, u, x, y, defined on a connected open set, omega, <laughs> um, is said to have a conjugate function, da da da, if, okay. My brain is turning to mush. Um, mathematics, real value function, defined on a connected open set. Said to have a conjugate function, if and only if they are respectively the real and imaginary parts of a holomorphic, such a fun word, function of the complex variable, this goodness. I think I've heard of one. Have I heard of this? A mathematics homomorphic function. This is just like such a funky, that's a weird looking thing. Um is a complex value function of one or more complex variables that is at every point of its domain complex differentiable not complex comma differentiable but complex differentiable in a neighborhood of the point what the fuck that sounds insane that sounds really insane the existence of a complex derivative in a neighborhood this is not the music. I don't like this music very much. Shopping with Google no, helps please. you find whatever you're no, looking for. You can still hear the Google. My workout shirts for at-home athletes. Boring. Like, workout shirts is called Goodwill. It's called the thrift store. Holomorphism. Okay. Um, let's let's try not Wikipedia. I don't think Wolfram's much better. What is meant? Miriam Webster is giving a math definition. How does this come up? And even the discussion of differentiable. Like, whoa. We doing, are we doing calculus with our quantum now? I don't know. Um, this we're gonna let it go and I will be gone I will be gone um I'm simply responding um
Okay. I have responded to a man not, that is not here. I'm well aware. Um, so why did I do that? I don't know. This is Walker Stipe. Signing off.